first of all, congratulations on the film. Um, Thank you. My pleasure. I've uh, it's been interesting. I you know I've liked your work for years, and I you know I'm 36, so like I'm kind of the right age to be like, oh, I'm getting into film. Oh, look, here's another director to try out, and you go, yep, I'm in. Let's just keep going for the next uh, lifetime. But I uh, interestingly have become friends with Bruce Dern. Oh, how and, so? How so? Uh, because of your film. Yes. No, I, I met him for your film, interviewing him, and he, he adopted me as his uh, pseudo uh, movie grandson. No, it's so we talk a couple times a year and he he refers to you as one of the masters. So I I always think about that in terms of, you know, you make a film and you want people to like it and you want to have a good time and you want to have a good experience. But you don't always think about who you work with as as, you know, you want someone right for the part. But when you're thinking back on these things. Do you ever think back and go, well, I got to work with Bruce Dern. I got to work with Jack Nicholson. I've gotten to sort of like, not check boxes, but these people I grew up like developing a love of film because of their work. I got to then work with them and hopefully get a whole new generation to appreciate film. And like the quiet- 100%, 100%. Yeah. Not just Jack Nicholson and Bruce Dern, but throw from those 70s guys. Uh, St I had Stacey Keach, Burt mm -hmm. Reynolds, and Bo Bridges. Sure. And don't think I wasn't thinking, God, I watched your movies when I was a teenager. Yeah. Like, because that's what I've always and gotten to meet. And then socially, I've gotten to meet uh, Bob Rafelson and Mark Rydell. And of course, I've met Martin Scorsese. I've met Francis Coppola. I uh, was very fortunate to be very friendly with uh, Mike Nichols. So not only have I gotten to work with some of those actors, but I became... Oh, Arthur Penn, he was a lovely guy. I got to meet a bunch of those directors. Oh, yeah, because you, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, I think it's probably hard for an audience to enjoy. So if you're not making memories that you're going, I can't believe I did that. Like, how is an audience going to get, you know, what you want out of it? And and granted, you know, your movies will ask you to do different things. But as a general rule, they want you to have a good time. You're supposed to leave having had an entertaining time. There's There's darker elements to some of them, but... They're mostly meant to make you leave on a high. And if you don't have that high, I can't believe I did this. Like they paid me to hang out with these guys. Like I got to do this. Yeah. It's hard for me. Right. So that, right? I, a couple of responses to that. Real. <laughs> so just a couple of quotes um, that I agree with. Kurosawa used to say, a movie can be anything, sure. but basically a movie should be entertaining and easily understood. And then you can do anything after that. And then uh, you mentioned Jack Nicholson. I'll tell you something he told me. I, I We had just made about Schmidt and then I made Sideways. Then I asked him and Harry Giddis, who had produced about Schmidt, Jack Nicholson's old friend, to come in and see a, a cut of Sideways. Yeah. And after it was over, Nicholson turned to me and said, he said, Fred Astaire used to tell me that I liked a movie when it made me want to be there. He right. said, watching Sideways, it made me want to be there. That's, I mean, you're, how do you not go? That's about the highest praise I'm going to get. Um, no, it's lovely. Yeah. It's It's lovely. And, you know, you also talk about leaving the movie. I mean, sorry, having an audience ideally leave the movie with a high yeah we have to break down what that high means is a high mean because they've been entertained or because it has a happy ending or for me it's just with the feeling that you've seen a good movie the yeah. movie could be a total downer you yeah. know or a tragedy but if you've seen it if you have the feeling that you've seen a very good movie then that's always a high and if you want to talk about it i think i think the worst the worst review a director can get is someone came out and they may have liked the movie but they go, what's for dinner? Like, there's just nothing totally. about the movie. 100%. And even talk about it, but also think about it. That, yeah. you, that you think that that an audience member, that I, when I see a great movie, that I just kind of keep thinking about it, right? And it's rare, a movie that you remain under its spell oh, yeah. for a and, while. And with this one, I mean, it feels very much like a movie of yours, even though you didn't write it. So how do you, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about what you're going to do, because there wasn't a time where you knew you were going to make this, you, you know, take it as it comes. How do you feel that it's right? Because when you're writing something or co-writing it, you know you know how it's going. You 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 know how you feel, and 
I'm sure there's things that didn't get made because you went, it's not, it's not for me anymore or whatever the case may be. But when you come across something, how do you find the right amount? Because I imagine you don't want it to feel like, oh, this person wrote something almost specifically to be made by me. And you don't want to necessarily go, this is so far in left field, I don't know that I can do it. How do you find like, it feels like the perfect combination, this film. Like it, it feels crafted. It's another large question. I kind of have to unpack a little bit. Uh, let me just reduce it and say, I'm not the credited screenwriter on this film, but I originated the film. Excellent. I had the idea, and then I, uh, uh, God brought me uh, David Hemmingson, who had had the appropriate life experience, and thank God the the right kind of shared sensibility with me. So. I gave him the premise. He agreed to write it. Together, we hashed out. You know, he would the the storyline because I just gave him the premise. So, by the end of that process, where I would say yay nay yay nay yay nay, or let me rewrite this part, or you know, this this the collaboration between him and me, maybe the first experience in let's say directing a screenwriter, we wound up with something personal to its to us both. He feels tremendous ownership of it, and so do I. And like I said, like I just said, it's personal to us both. Yeah. And of course, they're going to want to make that movie. And then you ask, like, why this one now? You don't, you can't predict because the damn script was ready. Yeah. I, as soon as the script is ready, you know, I'll pounce into action. And this one, you know, I have two, three, four others, and on various burners at yeah. various temperatures, but this one was ready. Well, it's, I think, you know, every filmmaker has it. And I, I did think the exact same thing you said. It's like, oh, you're directing the screenplay. What an interesting way of doing it. You're you're almost, you know, directing it from a, just enough of a distance. Well, it kind of makes sense. I mean, the director directs the other artists who are department heads, the production designer, the, the editor, the composer, the cinematographer. So why not also directing the writer? Yeah, it, make, it makes sense. You're You're empowering someone else creatively while still going... There's a picture in my head and we're never going to have that picture on the screen, but if we can get as close as possible, it's going to be something special, hopefully. Yeah. Although I, I'll not to get too granular with you, but I never really know in advance what the movie's going to look like. I kind of have to make the movie, yeah. which is a process of discovery every day and adding to it every day to kind of find out later. Oh, so that's what the movie looks like. Well, you get I, never, the rest of us I really though. never, I don't have a preconceived notion as to what a movie should look like. No, I think the, well, I mean, they speak for themselves. I mean, the, the Oscars on your <laughs> show speak for themselves, but it is, I think that is a fun way to make it because then there's a sense of discovery for you. You go, oh, maybe that's why I wanted to make this. And I didn't. Well, you can't think of everything in advance. Yeah. No. It's like doing, no, it's like doing a crossword puzzle. You get so far and you go, I'm stuck, man. I can't do any more today. And then you come back to it a couple hours later and they say, oh, that's a, it's kind of like that. The creative yeah. process is kind of like that. Oh yeah. And then when you, when you finish, like, I feel like this movie, as we sort of wrap up is almost like it's got depth and it, it it's obviously emotional, but it feels almost like it's hugging you in a way because it is a very vibey movie. And if you're into the vibe, you just kind of feel like, like a Hal Ashby movie. I'm just like, thank you for the like movie hug. How do you know that you hit it at the end? Like you said, you don't know until you made it, but Listen, you, man, I, I appreciate hearing that. I, I didn't set out to make, to make a hug. Yeah. Uh, but if you feel uh, a cinematic warm embrace, well, you know, thanks for telling me. Oh, yeah. It almost feels like a Christmas movie in a way. Like, just like the, like, I feel like everyone's in a better place at the end. And that's a very schmaltzy thing to do, but to do it your way is. It's, it's not schmaltzy if it's earned. Yes. It, things are schmaltzy if they're forced and unearned. But if, if, and I mean, I, I don't want to take your word schmaltzy too literally. I know what but you I, mean. Yeah, I yeah. totally know what you mean. But but we're talking about having emotional effects in a film with hopefully without sentimentality. Yeah. And I, I certainly aim for that. It uh, it passes the cinematic smell test, which is a funny description <laughs> for your movie considering your main character smells. So there you go. It, it, it all yeah, runs together good. in the end. Um, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, minus the you know alarms for doing this. This is, I feel like, when you watch a movie like that, you want to talk about it, which we were just saying is kind of the best compliment. So getting to have a, a moment about it is 
is very cool. And I think the more people see it, I saw it back at Telluride. It's um Oh really? Oh, but yeah. we didn't we didn't meet there. No, we weren't supposed to be talking. You know, you're half on strike. It's okay. Um, exactly. Whatever. It worked out. But no, I've I've been thinking about it since then. And I, I feel like I like it more and more the more I think about it. And that's a it's a real cool thing. So you should be very proud well, of it. My my prayer would be that it rewards a second viewing. I will I will guarantee you a second viewing. How about that? All so right. Cheap. Uh, thanks for the interest. Thanks for the conversation. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Awesome. All right. See you later. You too. Thanks, thanks. Joey.